Merhaba arkadaşlar. Uh, my name is uh, Özcan Öztürk. I am uh, one of the uh, instructors for CS224. Uh, as you know, uh, Will is uh, not feeling so good for uh, the last couple of days and he still couldn't uh, recover. So I will try to fill in uh, for him today. Uh, we will continue the chapter 2 discussion and uh, we will cover the last part of the uh, three slide set. So this, this will be the last set actually uh, which, uh, which tries to discuss the um, compiler issues and then also uh, we will see a couple of other things along with the uh, linker loader libraries and other stuff. Uh, so I will uh, first start with um, the branch branch instruction. If you remember, um, Bill said you stopped here, so I will. Uh, I assume you already covered that part. So if you uh, if you remember any branch instruction such as beq, beq, rs, rt, and then the loop, for example. So you test whether these two whether these two registers are equal. If they are equal, you'll jump into this instruction where this label points to. So let's say this is your loop, uh, which executes, for example, add uh, t0, t1, and t2, let's say. Uh, whatever, what this does is it compares these two registers and then jumps into this uh, instruction and continues execution from there, that point on. So when you uh, look at the instruction format of uh, such a branch instruction, if you remember, you have the OP which is composed of six bits and then you represent these two registers using the five bits. So if it is register two, you'll have uh, five bits representing the number two and so on. And then you have the constant uh, or immediate which is the 16 bits. So uh, the 16 bits that we use is actually the offset. Right, if you remember. This offset, when you look into the instruction format, this is the 16-bit offset, right? So we use this offset to calculate where we are going to jump into within the branch instruction uh, code. So if you look into this branch uh, instruction, it is in this example, this is the base address that we are using actually. And if you remember, this is the PC. What does PC stand for? Program counter. So it indicates which instruction we are executing right now. And um, you, th using this offset, it could be a negative value or a positive value. You can move up in this uh, instruction sequence or uh, you can move below. So if it is positive, you'll go down. And if it is, uh, for example, uh, negative, you'll go towards the lower address spaces. So um, once, you, once you have this offset, what we do is actually we append two zeros at the end. Why do I append these two zeros to this 16-bit offset? Instructions in, uh, in MIPS are all 32 bits, right? So we represent this instruction, add instruction, using 32 bits. This instruction, 32 bits. So there's no way you could move around in, uh, in address space, which is not a multiple of 4. So when we start with the address space, you'll start with 0, and then you'll go with 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on. So each one of these addresses will indicate a uh, single instruction. So always we go by multiples of fours. And uh, obviously, the last two bits will always be two zeros. So we don't need to store these two bits in our 16-bit offset. What do we do instead? We append these zeros, assuming that that's going to be definitely there. So we'll just include them at the end, append it at the end. So we can express using these 16 bits a larger address space instead of you know, uh, reserving these two zeros at the end of this offset. So what you could have done instead of this is you could just uh, have these zeros in the offset and use only 14 bits here to represent the remaining part. However, this will give you a smaller range. When you consider if this is your current instruction, BEQ, if I have a range that I could go with this offset x and x with this format, that would be the, so far I could go with uh, in terms of the offsets, right? If I had, instead of this, if I had expressed these two and assume that I would use these whole 16 bits to express in uh, a bigger range. I could uh, add them at the end as two leading zeros. Then what would be the range that I could move around here on the positive and negative sides? It's going to be, 
4x in one dimension and 4x in the other dimension, right? Because uh, originally my uh, space that I could represent with um, 14 bits was this. Now I have 16 bits, which I could, you know, move uh, a lot larger in terms of the space that I can move around in my memory. So the idea is uh, not waste the space to store these two zeros. Already we know it. It's going to be there. So once you have this offset, 16-bit offset, you take it, right? And then you append two zeros. So you get uh, how many bits? 18 bits, right? So the total is 18 bits. What do we do next? How do I get the branch target address? So if it is BEQ that I'm currently running and I'm going to jump into this uh, address which is given with the label loop, uh, which is this instruction, how am I going to compute this target instruction? Now I have this 2 bits, 16 bits. What am I going to do? In order to add this offset to my base address, right? This, you need to have a base plus offset. What do I do? I need to extend this to 32 bits, right? So that I can add two 32-bit numbers and get a 32-bit result. And what you do is actually you extend this to 32 bits. How do you extend it? Do I sign extend or zero extend? Since we can move in both negative and positive directions, you need to sign extend it, right? Because if it is, let's say, if the value that you would like to have here is minus 2, you would like to still keep that minus 2 as a minus 2. And in, in order to do that, you have to sign extend it. So if this is the sign bit, the leftmost bit is the sign bit, remember. If this is the sign bit, then you'll add all these s's here, which could be either a 0 or a 1, right? Um, if, it, if it was a positive, you'll append with uh, all zeros. If it is negative, which, is, which means it was one, you'll append all ones. So you sign extend this number. So let's say this is the... This is the 16-bit number that you had, and then you have the two zeros at the end. You sign extend it, you make it a total of 32 bits. And then you add this value this is the offset now. You add this value to what? So you'll have something. This is the adder, right? So you have this. And then what will I add here? PC plus 4. And then you get the target address. This is for branch again, BEQ or BNE, whatever instruction you execute. So um, why do we add with PC plus 4? Because um, we usually, what happens is that in most of the instructions, for example, add, you mostly continue with the next instruction in sequence. So let's say this is subtract. You will continue, after the set, you will continue with the next instruction in line, which is actually PC plus 4. So what computer processor actually does is, while you're trying to, while the processor is trying to uh, identify what this instruction is doing, it doesn't know whether it's a branch, add, sub, whatever that instruction is. At the same time, it is trying to calculate PC plus 4. The reason is because most of the time, you always continue with the next instruction in line and you don't need to jump somewhere. But in certain cases, you may need to jump, as in this case. Branch or jump instructions need to move the instruction sequence other than PC plus 4. So uh, as, as I said earlier, since most of the times you use PC plus 4 already, you calculate this as a pre-step to make things faster. So you calculate this, and then if it is a branch, you'll add this offset to this to get to the target. If not, you'll just continue with PC plus 4. So what you see is um, there is a, actually a multiplexer which selects either PC plus 4 or this target address, depending on the instruction type. Right? Whichever, if this is a branch instruction, it, it would select this. If, it is a, um, if it's a regular add, subtract, multiply, you know, any R type or load instruction, it will continue with PC plus 4 because each instruction is followed by the next one in the uh, sequence. So that's why we compute PC plus 4 and everything is based on PC plus 4 in branch target uh, address calculation. So um, this is how you would calculate. For example, if I give you an example here, uh, let's say 
uh, this is in address let's say this is in uh, OX AB0 and then you have another instruction here AB4 and then you have AB8 and then let's say this is the next instruction AB what will be the last uh, digit C 12 right so you'll have this is the address for this instruction assume that it is the case so in this case what would be the 16-bit offset that you have here so this part if you remember you have the RSRT and then the opcode for BEQ so we don't care about that portion at this point but what we do care is the 16-bit that we have here what would be the value for 16 bits here what is the PC PC is this one right I will put a number here what would be the value that I'm going to put so as, as, as earlier as I said earlier you you need to see the value for PC plus 4 everything is based on that so we have PC plus 4 is this uh, so what's the difference between these two addresses four to go to this one four to go to this one so you have eight uh, address difference right so you need to add PC plus 4 you need to add an offset which is equal to 8 to get that 8 we, all, we know that we have the, these two leading zeros at the end already if you have 2 in, uh, in this offset that would do the job for us so if you multiply 2 <laughs> with 4 you'll get 8 which is the offset that you're looking forward to okay so this is the calculation behind the branch instruction BEQ and also BNE and uh, you know branch instructions in general okay so we always go with PC plus 4 that's a, uh, that's an important thing um, again the reason is because PC is already incremented by 4 while you're trying to understand what kind of instruction you are executing any question okay so we have a similar you know uh, instruction which is a jump which is an unconditional you know branch in a sense so you jump no matter what you you go into this label uh, immediately when you execute this instruction it works in a similar way however um, uh, as you remember we have the six bits for the opcode and this two indicates that that's the opcode for the jump instruction unconditional jump and then the remaining since we use six bits for the opcode we have 26 bits remaining we'll use those 26 bits to uh, indicate where we would like to jump and when you look into this the similar approach applies so you have this 26 bits and then we append two zeros at the end which indicates you know we're going with words word by word and then you have the four bits that are coming from the PC if you remember we said PC is the current instruction that we are executing and uh, let's say if you have uh, 1101 as the first leading four bits in your uh, PC then that will s s copy directly from this PC into your um, into your instruction that you're going to jump into okay so that's how you calculate so you take the PC 31 to 28 bits the first four bits of the PC so you don't care about the rest 28 so you <coughs> copy these two four these four bits and then you also these are the four bits coming from the PC you have the 26 bits coming from the uh, instruction which is given here and then four bits you have the 26 bits and then you append two zeros at the end uh, as, did, as we did before so this is how you would calculate the target address in a jump instruction um, again the idea is since you're executing within your program segment if this is your code if this is PC that you're executing you would definitely be in this range uh, with PC and you you would use the four bits the first four bits of the PC to obtain the uh, target address with this jump okay any question so it's the similar uh, as branch instructions except that you don't have any um, you don't have any condition in jumps so 
Uh, let's uh, do a small example here. If you look into this, this was uh, an example that is shown before uh, in one of the uh, you know, previous slides. So you have a, a loop that jumps over and over and checks for a certain condition. Branch not equal T0 as 5. If they're not equal, it jumps into exit, which it continues from here. And then otherwise, it will go back to the top of the loop unconditionally. Okay, so if you, uh, if you see here, the first instruction is obviously you have the opcode and the, uh, the function fields identifying what kind of uh, operation you're performing. And then you have the, these two register identifiers given with 0, 19, and 9. And um, you have the shift amount, which is 2, given with the shift amount bits here. And then if you look into the second line, you see that this is given with the next address, which is 80,004, right? This is the address of this instruction. If you want to execute this instruction, you need to go into this line. And you have T1, T1, uh, T1 added to S6 and then stored in T1. T1, you have S6 and then again T1. And addition is done with opcode 0 with function field 32, okay? And then you have load word. What are the components in a load word? Remember, it's an immediate I-type instruction. So you have the T0, which is given here with the 9. This is the register that identifies T0. And then you have, uh, sorry, T0 is here 8. And then you have T1 that's represented with 9. And then this is the opcode for load word instruction. And then the remaining bits, how many bits do I have here? 16 bits for the immediate field, which is going to represent the offset. So the first value would be here. What would be the value? Zero. And then uh, when you look into this one, branch not equal. So this is the opcode for branch not equal. And then we have T0 and S5, T0, S5. And now we need to find out the address for exit, which is given here with this address, which is 80,024. So we need to jump into this address. So what would be the value in this immediate? So now we are executing this, so it's going to be based on PC plus 4, right, which is this address. So the difference is 8 between these two addresses. Since we go with 4s, it's enough to have 2 here. If you multiply 2 with 4, you'll get 8. If you add to PC plus 4, which is this, you'll get to this address. So you're going to branch into that target. Okay. And then uh, this is similar to that one. You have obviously S3 and S3 for those two registers. This is the ad immediate opcode. And for immediate, you have one here, right? That's obvious. And when you look into this jump loop, this is the unconditional uh, jump or branch that we talked before. So what would be the value in this case? You have 2 as the opcode for the first 6 bits, then the 26 bits. What would be the value for this one? The value needs to be, so we are going to jump back to here, right? This is the loop. So we are going to jump here, jump loop. So we need to have a certain value that would give us this 80,000. Always remember, we had two zeros appended at the end. So which is multiplication by 4, which means we need to divide this value by 4. So that this will be 20,000. OK? Since they're in the ad same address domain, the first four bits will be f zeros anyway, right? The PCs, PCs tw 31 to 28 will be all zeros anyway because uh, this, is, uh, this is going to be a, a lot bigger number if you had uh, one here. So this address space is still uh, in the same domain, so you don't need to worry about the rest. So this should be 20,000 in order to execute correctly. Any question? So remember, we, we said that in order to, so this is your jump instruction. And then the six bits are used for the opcode. And you have the 26 bits. So the way to uh, calculate the target address is you take these 26 bits, append two zeros at the end. OK? So it makes 26 plus 2, 28 bits. So in order to get a 32-bit address, you need to have four more bits. 
those four more bits come from actually PCs if this is your PC the one that's you're currently executing the four bits that are coming from uh, the leftmost or most significant four bits so if you uh, if you want to jump into this address which is 80,000 you need to have this offset okay if this is 20,000 you multiply this it's like left shifting twice right shift uh, left logical twice which will give you a multiplication with four so that you'll get this target address which is 80,000 the reason I said this uh, all zeros is because 80,000 when you represent it uh, in 32 bit format the leftmost bits will be all zeros anyway so you don't need to worry about this part that's what I said Okay, because you're just, um, you know, the distance between these two instructions is just 24 uh, address away from one another. So it should be sufficient uh, to assume that uh, all zeros are leading in the most significant four bits. Okay, is it clear? Any other question? So if you uh, write down the exact values, these are the values we just mentioned. So that should be... Um, that should be sufficient to execute. So you could uh, you could convert a given MIPS assembly language program into uh, the machine code as we gave here. So if you convert it to binary versions, you should be able to get the corresponding machine language representation and vice versa. If you go from here, you should be able to generate the corresponding MIPS version as well. Uh, in, in the exam, you may probably see something like this to uh, either calculate the you know, address or find out the certain instructions, um, corresponding MIPS version, and so on and so forth. So um, you should be able to convert one to another. If you know the idea behind it, uh, you can just check for the you know, IDs from the book and find out which instruction does what. And uh, what that means can be identified by looking at the instructions in the book. So uh, as we said earlier, as we said earlier, uh, you could go within your PC. Let's say if you wanted to jump, um, if you wanted to branch out for a distance far away from the PC, this is your base. This is the distance that you could go from um, this base address. Uh, the, the offset allows you to go. So what if you wanted to branch, if your instruction, let's say you have, a, you have an instruction here, that's just before the PC plus 4, which compares RS, RT, and then goes into a loop label, which loop label is up here, which cannot be covered by the, by the region that is covered with your offset. So what are you going to do? Actually, assembler comes into play in this kind of instructions and then converts your uh, branch equal instruction in, a, uh, in an equivalent instruction or set of instructions. Uh, set of instructions is given here. Um, so what it does is branch equal S0, S1, you would like to go jump into this label if they're equal. In this case, what it does is it converts into two, and then now it can represent a further away uh, label because, because you have 26 bits to represent the address, right? Instead of 16 bits, now you can use with the jump 26 bits. 26 bits. So using that, uh, now it compares again these two. If they're not equal, it branches into L2. So it's just doing the same thing. It will skip to the next line if they are not equal. And then if they are not equal, it's going to skip to here. However, if they are equal, this branch would immediately take it. However, in this case, if they are equal, it will continue with the next line, which is going to take you to L1 far. Exactly the same thing that we're trying to do. So um, the idea, again, is you, you, you can now use 26 bits to represent the address that you would like to jump into instead of only using the 16-bit offset. Um, so assembler calculates whenever you write this down, you may not know whether this is far or not far enough. You, you don't know it when you're writing your application. So your assembler such as SPIM or MARS will identify that this is too far away from your current base address. So it's going to convert this into these two instructions. So you don't need to worry about uh, whether this is in my you know, address domain or uh, whether I can address it by using the offset I have. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, the assembler automatically converts if it is the case. Okay. 
Any question? So um, when you look into the uh, addressing modes that we covered in the class so far, you can see that we have the immediate addressing, which takes immediate value and then operates on a register and stores it into another register. And then we have the register addressing, which uses two register values and then returns a result in the register again. So this is the second type. And then you have the third base addressing, which actually, for example, a load store, uh, load word, load byte, you know, load half byte, and unsigned versions, and all that. You can represent it by using the address, base address, and then the offset. And you can go into the memory and store the value into, into the register or uh, store it from the register to your memory, vice versa. And the next thing we have seen is PC relative addressing, which is actually, uh, what does this refer to? PC relative addressing. This refers to branches, right? So BEQ, BNE, and all other versions of it. So it refers to that. You have the base address PC plus 4, and then you add the offset to it to get to the target in the memory and access the location. And also, pseudo direct addressing, we, which we just covered, which is uh, indirect jumps. So you have the PC, the four bits of the PC appended with the address that's given with the lowest 26 bits, and you access the memory location and jump to uh, there to continue execution from that point. OK? So these are the five different types of uh, instruction or addressing modes. In uh, other instruction sets, for example, Intel's ISA32, you have um, uh, other instruction formats which you know, deal with, let's say, two memory operations or more register operands. So it's up to the instruction set to decide what kind of uh, addressing modes they address. So however, in MIPS, these are the ones that we cover um, in, in the class, and that's all available in MIPS architecture. So when we look at the overall picture of a MIPS processor so far, we see that this portion, this big uh, box is the processor. When you look into that, uh, if you remember, register file is the closest location in the processor in terms of the storage area. So how does the hierarchy work? The memory hierarchy in, uh, in a processor or in a, in a computer environment. So we first ha have the CPU, right, the processor. And within the CPU, you have the, in the heart, you have the register file, RF, which is a small, really small storage, fast to access, and then um, uh, you can easily uh, store the data and load it back, back and forth. So the idea is to use these as for variables. For example, in your program, you have int A. The idea is use the registers to, um, to use the variables uh, in a faster fashion. So accessing a register file is, for example, one cycle, just a, you know, uh, just a rough number. And then you have the next level is what in terms of the storage area? So what kind of uh, elements we have in a, in a computer system? Uh, so wh whenever you go, let's say, uh, buy a, a new processor, what would you ask for? Cache. Level 1 cache, right? So the next level of the cache is L1 cache. So you, let's say this is, um, uh, the size of this is in MIPS, if you remember, you have 32 bit times 32 registers, which is really a small area. However, it's fast. And then you have the L1 cache, which is, let's say, um, 64 uh, kilobyte. OK? Now, th this is taking three cycles, for example. A little longer than register, obviously, because not, it's not that close to the actual ALU and the processing units. So the next one is, obviously, L2 cache, for example. Right? In this case, you have, let's say, one megabyte, which takes eight cycles to access. And it could be on chip or off chip. You have the L3 cache, for example. Right? This one takes, let's say, 20 cycles. Again, these are just numbers that I come up with right now. Um, but they, they at least uh, represent a certain uh, behavior between the uh, storage 
uh, areas. So what would be the you know uh, value for the L3 cache size, for example? What do you have right now? Three megabyte. And then you have this is off chip, for example. And then you have the obviously RAM, which has gone up to four gigs and even further. So this takes uh, more than hundred cycles to access. And you have the disk, which is going to take a million cycles in most of the cases to access. However, you have terabytes and even bigger. So if, if you look at the hierarchy, you have smaller in size, however faster, and then you have uh, bigger in size, however really slow to access. So the idea is you would like to move the most frequently used data as much as possible up in the hierarchy. So register file is the closest location, as we said, to the processor. So we would like to utilize it as much as possible. So for example, if you have an array A, which is um, you know, 100 by 100, would you be able to fit this into register? No, right? You, you won't be able to fit the whole array into the register file because it can only have 32 32-bit 32 values. So what you most of the time do is you use this register file to store your variables in it. So for example, you have an integer A or a certain temporary variable that you use most of the execution. You, you, you use the registers to uh, compute those kind of computations. And whenever you need to load something from array, you'll do the same thing. Uh, when you look into this, we have 32 registers with 32 bits each. So the reason why we have 5 bits is clear, right? Why do we have 5 bits here for the source 1 address? Anybody? We have how many registers here? 32 registers. To represent 32 different registers, you need 5 bits, right? So your register file looks like something like this, just a picture. So you have register 0, 1, and then it goes all the way to 31. So uh, in order to address all these register 0 to 1, you need 5 bits to represent, which, you know, if you have 5 bits, you can represent 32 different cases, which is why you have 5 bits for source 1 address. And that's why in your instruction, all registers are represented with 5 bits. Okay? And then you have for write data is 32 bits. Why it's uh, 32 bits? Because the data that you're writing on register is 32 bits. That's why you have 32 bit data that's coming as an input. So you have the uh, source addresses. Similarly, the destination address is also again indicating which register you're writing into. And then the, these data are source 1 and uh, 2 data indicate 32 bits of data that you extract from the register file, right? So, so far we have seen the addressing is done using adders, right? We have the PC and PC plus 4. This is most of the time used. However, in certain cases, if it's a branch, instead of this, we use the branch offset plus the PC plus 4 and use this. Again, you'll have a multiplexer which selects either this one or this one, or actually a third one. What is the third one? Jump address, right? So depending on the instruction type you have, you can have the regular uh, R-type or loads and stores, which is going to just use PC plus 4. The second type of address movement you will have is going to be uh, like branch instructions such as BEQ, which will take you PC plus 4 plus the offset. And then the third one, and then the third one is jump type of instructions, which will take you to PC 31, 28, the first four bits, and the remaining ones will be uh, the instructions, 26 bits, and then you have the two zeros at the end. So you will, your multiplexer in the processor will select either one of these addresses depending on the type of the instruction you execute. That's for uh, the branches. And then obviously you have the ALU, which performs, for example, addition, multiplication, uh, shifts, and all other type of 
uh, arithmetic operations that you perform and you have the uh, instruction actually the pipeline that we will see in the uh, further lectures we first fetch the instruction right so we get it from memory we go to this address where it's stored and then extracted and decode it decoding means we understand what it tries to do for example whether it's a branch whether it's a whether it's an ad or whatever it does we decode it and then once we decode we'll execute the instruction so next thing that we do this is a cycle it will continue until we are done we will fetch the next instruction by looking at the PC plus 4 if it is not one of these other uh, branch instructions so this is what's happening in the processor and then we have the memory memory read and writes happen ter in 32 bits because we always um, um, read the data in 32 bits however obviously you can use for example load byte which is going to just take a portion of it and then append zeros or uh, you know depending on what you do uh, it will for example store byte will do something else and store the single byte into the memory so uh, if you remember memory is big endian what does big endian stand for so we start addressing if you remember byte address right we are uh, using byte addressing in MIPS so we have a word which is four bytes we could either start addressing 0 1 2 3 or we can start uh, from here 0 1 2 and 3 instead of this so uh, the idea is if it's big endian you start from addressing from the most significant bit which is the leftmost bit here in the little endian you start from the least significant bit so in uh, in different architectures for example in uh, Intel's IA32 you have the reverse which is little endian however MIPS uses this so whenever you access you access it by looking at the leftmost or most sig significant bits of the uh, instruction or the memory okay any question okay so um, the distribution of MIPS instructions is really important so if you uh, look into this table it actually indicates some uh, you know characteristics of the applications given in spec 2006 which is a, a well-known benchmark set used for computer architecture and processors in general so people usually report their results by looking at this spec 2006 or spec whatever they have the latest uh, for and they they report their results and compare their you know um, processors capabilities by looking at those numbers and if you look into this you see that instruction classes are given you have the arithmetic type which is add multiply and all those other arithmetic operations you have the data transfers which do load store load word store word byte half byte uh, half word and so on and then you have the logical uh, operators logical instructions which actually uh, perform and or you know uh, XOR and all other logical operations and then the conditional branch branch equal branch not equal and then unconditional jump which we just saw so if you look into here you see that uh, they have a different behavior according to the integer and floating point type most of the time floating point operations require required to do arithmetic uh, operations however integers for example uh, compose a uh, pretty big bulk of the instructions are branches so this is uh, this is an important fact actually for example uh, let's say you have a BEQ instruction people try to design their processors by looking at these numbers so that you know they their processor runs um, a lot better uh, when you give this benchmark set so what they do is for example uh, for BEQ as I said earlier BEQ uh, RS RT and then let's say loop and you have a loop that you execute something else here so what are the options one option is you could go with this PC plus 4 or you could go with this loop address which is PC plus 4 plus offset so which one to select depends on this condition right whether RS is equal to RT you will jump into branch into this address otherwise you will continue with this 
However, deciding on this is uh, really critical because if you know ahead of time which one is going to be executed, will give you a performance improvement because you can immediately start executing this instruction if you know that this is going to be the one. However, if you don't, you'll need to wait for this comparison to finish. If that comparison finishes, you'll now know what to do. So to prevent this and to make this faster, what uh, they did was they come up with branch prediction. We will see what branch prediction is uh, in the coming lectures, but for now I'm just explaining it for the purposes of uh, you know, uh, the instruction uh, variances. So branch prediction uh, is implemented such that at each branch they try to understand uh, which of the instruction or which of the uh, branch is going to be taken or not taken. So let's say this branch prediction tells 90% uh, of the time this branch is taken. Okay? So if you know this fact, what you could do is you can predict that this next instruction is going to be taken and execute according to that and try to make things faster. However, as you can see, 10% of the time you will uh, make a false decision which is uh, going to have adverse effects and you need to recover back from those uh, problems. Okay. So, uh, again, uh, you have to look into these numbers to optimize your architecture and that's what uh, people try to do when they're coming up with their next generation processor and uh, add more features to it to make things uh, run a lot faster uh, as opposed to, you know, uh, going with the uh, older stuff. Any question? Okay, uh, we will move into uh, synchronization, uh, but let's take a break and then we will continue uh, after the break. <laughs>